Welcome back to More Fly Time with Big Mess, Mess of Branch Outdoors. And today we're going to talk about the difference between calf body hair and calf tail hair. This is going to be something to where it's kind of a debate. It's more of an opinion based uh, on which is better, one or the other. I think they're fairly equal in what they do. However, there's a lot of cases that using the calf body hair for calf wings, uh, when it calls for that, the particular fly, can be a little bit better, particularly than maybe the calf tail. So some of the differences between these particular items, if you'll notice here on the calf tail, the fibers here are more crinkly. You can probably see that there on the camera. We're on the calf body here. Those fibers are really fine. Now with that being the case, they do come with a price. These are actually shorter. And you see the patch here is fairly small. But all in all, when you start to talk about what you can use off of this calf tail, the amount of material, you're going to get roughly about the same amount of dry flies out of this as you would any other uh, piece of material. Now, as you work your way up the calf tail, these fibers do get to, uh, they do get out of sorts, as you can see. So these here are not as attractive to use for your wings on your dry flies. However, for telling materials, it could be the case. It could work out quite well for you. I would like to know what you folks are using. Some people are even using man-made synthetic materials now instead of calf body or calf tail. But your classic Royal Wolf, your wolf style flies call for calf tail, but your purple haze, things of that nature call for calf body. And I would dare to say that probably in 80% of the fly bins across the world, when you see a parachute at them, or you see um, another parachute fly, it's probably gonna be calf body. It's a little bit easier to tie with. You don't even have to stack it, honestly, if you do it right. The one thing it will point out to you, you can see these fibers are going in a certain direction. So when you cut, you may not necessarily be cutting this way. You've got to cut with those particular fibers to get the hair that's straight or you're going to be cutting across that. Uh, shout out to people watching all around the world. It's overwhelming. People from the Netherlands have been chiming in, uh, fishing in Luxembourg and places like that. Uh, here locally in North Carolina as well, different parts of the country, up north in the state, so it's pretty awesome. So revisit, this is a fly we tied last week and I did use the calf tail on it, as you can see right there, dyed yellow. So I'm gonna do a couple of particular uh, wings here for you, one with the calf body, one with the calf tail, so you can see the difference. Uh, that way, if you're new in the fly tying, uh, you know, this might answer a question for you and also hair stackers. I have multiple hair stacker sizes. I do large. This one here is a medium. This one is a small. So for your calf body hair, you can actually use the small. When you get into a calf tail, usually the medium will, will work fine for you, but sometimes I'll stack it first time with the large and then go down to the medium. So I'm going to take just a generic hook here. I'm going to put it into the Norvice fly tying system here right quick in my standard jaws, and then we're going to just do a few things here with the material so you can see the differences and then you can go create. All right, just gonna get a little thread base started here right quick for you. That way I've got something to tie to. So I'm just gonna spin this. This is a large hook. This is actually a hopper, a hopper hook. First, I'm gonna start with the calf body hair for us. So I'm going to get my small hair stacker and I'm going to come in and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to get some material, start down here at the bottom, try to maximize this. One of the things that you're going to notice on your calf body here is there is not as much waste or under fur fluff, but it comes at a cost. The material is much shorter as you can see here. So it takes a little while to get accustomed to working with this material, but I love how it looks. It does well. They both do the same thing at the end of the day. So I wanna put this here in a hair stacker, tips down of course, we're gonna do that. Get rid of some of those small fibers and then we have to stack the hair. Gonna give it some taps. We're going to pull the hair stacker and you can see how those tips are lined up there pretty good. And right off the bat, you can see how much straighter those tips are 
easy for you to see there, just like that. I'm gonna bring my thread back over here. That's the cool thing about the auto bobbin if you're not using one of those. So now, making sure I got all those loose fibers out of there. Look at that beautifully stacked calf body here. I'm gonna spin my thread counterclockwise. So get that jump backwards for me. Kind of get a pinch wrap in through there. Do a couple of wraps. And now I'm gonna get that locked in place and we'll just post up a, a pair of wings here for you. Now, um, if you're tying parachutes, like I said, this, this is pretty awesome to use. Right there, we just went ahead and built up a body tape or two. So if you're not using doing that already, that will help you uh, tie a little bit better fly. Come in here and post up the front of this material. So I'm gonna tie a tie back into that there, just like so, I'm gonna post that up. And I just broke my thread. And then I'm gonna split these. I'm just gonna do a traditional mayfly style wing, just a split wing. Try to split it in half as much as you can. It's not gonna be perfect, but at the end of the day, I think you'll see the difference between the calf body and, and the calf tail. There you go, beautiful. There we go, starting to come together. Nice. Had great response to the hackle cut wings there. I really do appreciate that. Very, very overwhelming the response on that. So we appreciate it. Keep growing the channel, folks. Keep growing. So that right there is a pair of calf tail, or excuse me, calf body wings there. Boy, that thread broke again, which is not normal. So there you go. You can see that. See how much nicer those wings are. There we go. Beautiful. There we go. All right, now the calf tail, typically where you wanna do, you wanna pull the hair off of the, uh, the lower part down here next to the black or whatever you have. The good thing about these is you can actually pick up the calf tails in different colors or you can dye them yourselves. Gonna reach in here and try to get a clump. Now with this, you're gonna have a lot of waste. That's a large clump, but you see that right there, a lot, a lot of waste. See right there, I just pulled one thing out and you see how much under fur is coming out of that. And that's why I'm saying as far as usable material, it's about one in the same to be honest with you there. And I'm trying to do a fair comparison of the particular wing material so you can see. There we go. Get that cleaned out quite nicely. It'll stack a lot better. You can probably see the difference in the hair right there. See how it goes all different directions, the coarseness. Some people like that. They say it helps it float better. That's just a matter of opinion, I believe. I wanna get that in the hair stacker there right quick. With the materials being coarser, it doesn't stack quite as nicely. But there we go, got the tips fairly aligned. I'm gonna pull them out. So an advantage right off the bat is, is you've got more room to work with here. You can see how much longer these fibers are. So you got much, much more room to work with. I'm gonna bring my bobbin over. I'm gonna spin my thread counterclockwise here. One, two, I like that. And I'm just gonna to start to lock that down. Bring my scissors in at a kind of a 45. Just build that taper up naturally. There we go. I'm gonna come in here and grab these fibers. Got them locked down, build up a taper as if we were tying an actual fly. Gonna come in here and in front, we're gonna build a dam up in front of that just like we was previously while we go. And then we will be finished and you can see the difference. Be sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We greatly appreciate it. We're growing quicker than we anticipated and we don't wanna lose that momentum. It's all because of you folks there. And as we are warming up, we'll be getting some uh, fishing videos out there with you too. We'll do some, uh, some small stream stuff. We're starting to warm up here in Western North Carolina. In fact, it's in the, the low 70s today. We're well, well ahead of typically temperature-wise, sorry about that, folks, of where we normally would, would be. And uh, got to get out there. Got, got some guide trips coming up this week um, there on some of the uh, stocked waters. 
But uh, I like to get out there in some of those small creeks with you folks and you guys can tag along with me. So I'm just going to figure eight wrap these here like so. That's going to draw those hair fibers in close, close, just like that. And you've got a beautiful set of wings right there for you to tie a roll wolf, a uh, thunderhead style flies that we use here in the, the mountains of North Carolina, just like that. So I'm going to take these and let you see them side to side. So here is the calf body. You can see it's a lot finer material there. And here is the calf tail. Now with this being said, uh, this is a really large hook. I'm just using this here just as a demonstration purposes. Typically 12s, 14s, 16s, you'll use the amount of fur that you actually need for that particular, um, that particular fly pattern. But nonetheless, hopefully right there, you can see the difference in how straight these hairs are versus these hairs here. Hopefully you found that information informative. If so, be sure to watch out for next week's fly tying video. If you have any questions, just email them to me at messerbranchoutdoors at gmail.com. Let us know where you're watching from. Hey, let's see where the, uh, the longest. So we've had Australia. We've had stuff in the UK. Um, let's, let's see how far out we can reach people and where this is. Y'all take care, and we'll catch you on the next week's video. See ya.